Hallelujah. Many different uh, churches have different standards, you know, on how to live. It's very, very important that you consider your way today. That's, that's what I'm here to basically encourage you to consider your ways. I'm not perfect. I'm not your judge. You know, I'm a sinner. I've done some horrific things in my life. You know, I'm prepared to share these things with you. But the greatest testimony is that when you lay your life down before God and you actually ask for forgiveness and you realize that God is real and He wants to save you, that His will is to save you and wash all your sin away from your life and make your, your heart as white as the driven snow, which is in the book of Isaiah, okay? This is what God wants. It's the blemishless lamb who was slain at Calvary for your sin. That is the greatest news that the world has ever heard. It doesn't matter about football. I used to play football when I was younger. I used to play amateur football. I coach football, okay? It's not as if I don't like the sport, but at the end of the day, it's just a sport. You know, too many people today treat these things as a religion and they just literally go and worship their football team, okay? What happened to actually worshiping God, okay? If anyone deserves your praise and worship is God himself, is Jesus Christ for dying on the cross for your sin and he does live, you know? Even the Quran says that Jesus Christ lives. Even the Quran says that Jesus Christ lives. The Bible says he sits at the right hand of God and he's, gone, he's coming back to judge the earth. And he truly is. If you don't know him today, I encourage you to confess your sin. Get right with him today. He's your only hope, okay? Your hope isn't in religion or man or interpreting holy books in which there's many different interpretations of the Bible. There's many different interpretations of the Quran, as I just mentioned earlier. You know, Jesus in the Quran prophesied of his own death and resurrection. So how many imams actually teach that? No, your only, your only hope is in Jesus Christ, that he truly does live. And he is the creator of the universe. He truly is the creator of the universe. He's not just a righteous man. He's not just a prophet. That everything he said came to pass, which is the test of a true prophet. Everything he said came to pass. And I can apply that to the Quran as well. You know, if you believe all the prophets in the Quran and you're a Muslim, why don't you believe then what Jesus Christ said? In Surah 19, 15 and 33, he spoke about his own death and resurrection. And so even the Quran says, if you don't believe what all the prophets spoke, then you're an infidel. So don't tell me, you know, that we're all infidels, please. Okay, the only way you can interpret a holy book is through the Holy Spirit, okay? If you can ask God, then He will give you the interpretation. As the Bible says, all knowledge and wisdom and understanding comes from God, okay? And basically, Jesus Christ encourages us to build up treasure in heaven. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ encourages us to build up treasure in heaven today. So I, want, I just encourage you, I wonder if how many of us are actually doing that. You know, Jesus said to the young man, the young man was interested in what the teacher was saying. And Jesus Christ said to him, have you kept all the commandments from youth? And the young man says, yes, I've respected my mom and dad. I haven't lied, I haven't stolen. And Jesus said to the young man, knowing that he had a lot of possessions, he said to him, one thing you lack, go and sell everything you have to the poor and come and follow me. And so which of us that are Christians actually desire to be perfect like that? Many of us might have quite a lot of possessions. Are you prepared to give them up and follow Jesus Christ? God knows where you are in your life, okay? Becoming a Christian isn't just saying one prayer. Becoming a Christian is actually listening to and following your master and your savior, okay? So that the world can see God's love. So that the world can see the truth of the gospel for themselves. 
because the world truly is lost in religion and man's tradition. Even the Pharisees, even the Sanhedrin are lost in their tradition, okay? Every single religion is the same. And even the Pharisees, they actually, this week they actually put the Pope on trial, the, the Jewish Sanhedrin. Isn't it amazing? I don't think the Pope's going to turn up for that. But at the end of the day, the Bible does say that every man, when they die, shall face the judgment. Even the Pope, even the greatest imam, religious leader you've ever said, the Dalai Lama, every single one of them shall stand in front of God and give an account for their lives. Okay? The Bible talks about not only not sinning, but not doing righteousness is also sin. Not keeping God's commandments is sin. How many of us can truly say we've kept God's commandments from birth? Okay, how many of us can truly say that? I don't think probably anybody can say that here. And so that means that because you have sinned before God, He will send you to hell. Just, it's, it's a done deal. Don't be surprised if you wake up one day and you find yourself in hell. Just don't be surprised because the Bible already says it, okay? But what the gospel is, what it offers you is a chance to confess your sin before God before you die. It's a knowledge that God truly does love you and wants you to repent of your sin and get right with God. So I see I got flyers here. I got flyers here about the Quran. If anybody wants, if anybody's a Muslim, anybody wants to debate me about the Quran, I'm right here. Okay, because I know what it says about Jesus Christ. I know what Jesus said in the Quran. Apparently he said that he's going to die and be resurrected. And so that matches up with what the Gospels say. So I'm prepared to debate anybody who's in Islam. Okay. And so that's, that's the fact today. Jesus Christ truly is alive. You know, he truly is coming back. He's not coming back under anybody. He's coming back as the Son of God to judge the earth. And this is what Jesus said. Anybody ever watched any movies about Jesus, like Mel Gibson's uh, The Passion? You know, that's partly Bible-based as well. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, when Jesus says that um, he's coming back in the clouds and every eye shall see him. Okay. That's what Jesus said. When I come back, every eye shall see me in the clouds. Now, if you, if you check out the Jehovah Witness doctrine, the Jehovah Witnesses actually say that Jesus came back a hundred years ago. And I was speaking to a Jehovah Witness last time I was out, and the Jehovah Witness guy said, yeah, Jesus came back a hundred years ago. And I said to him, where is he? And he said, I don't know. And I says, well, your theology is basically out the window because... You know, Jesus said that when he comes back, every eye shall see him, and the tribes of the earth shall mourn. Okay, that hasn't happened yet. Christ's second coming has not happened yet. Okay, it doesn't matter about what the Jehovah Witnesses tell you, and how nice they seem, okay? They're not telling you the truth. Jesus, fortunately for, for you, if you're not saved, hasn't come back yet. If he had come back yet and you're not saved, well, you, you are going to hell, you are going to the lake of fire, okay? It's not a joke. Many people in their lives have cried out to God. As you say, God doesn't matter to God what sins you've committed. God is only in the saving business, okay? He's in the forgiving business, he's in the saving business. He wants you to be in heaven with him for eternity. That's how much he loves you. doesn't matter what sins you've done. How many girls you've slept with, how much drugs you've taken, if you've even killed people before. As I say, even the Apostle Paul was a murderer. And he wrote about a quarter of the New Testament because God forgave him. Because God forgave him, okay? That's why. So those of us with a religious spirit and we think we're going to get there by good works or by just going to church, forget it. Unless you know Jesus Christ personally as your Lord and Saviour, you're, no, you're not going to heaven. It's just simple as that, okay? 
and as they say, me personally, how did I come to know Jesus Christ? Well, my grandmother was dying of cancer. She was a, 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 a Christian woman. I was going to say religious, but she really wasn't. She was a Christian woman. She was a very loving woman, a great granny she was to me. And just three days before she died, she saw a vision of Jesus Christ. She had cancer. She had it for a long, long time. She could have just cursed God. You know, she could have just cursed God and just, you know, said, I've had enough, you know, just, just basically, but she didn't do that. You know, she kept her faith in God and she was rewarded and she saw Jesus Christ just before she died. As I say, many people, before they die, they know their eternal destiny. Anton LaVey, who was from the Church of Satan, saw a vision of hell and all the demons that were going to torture him for eternity and he really wondered if it was worth doing all the evil things that he did okay and he really really considered his ways but it was too late it was too late because his pride and arrogance wouldn't let him repent don't let that be you do not let that be you today the bible talks about seven deadly sins one of them is pride one of them is a lying tongue feet that do mischief and a, a proud and arrogant look don't be like that to God God truly loves you it's like the person that's really blessed you in your entire life and that's the person that you that's the person that you uh, least think about 